How can anyone imagine Greece without the city of Thessaloniki? A less known fact about the Greek city is that more than a century ago, Greeks, Serbians, Bulgarians, Turks and Austrians were fighting to conquer it. Without the genius political decisions of Eleftherios Venizelos, then Prime Minister of Greece, and the courage and resilience of the Greek army, Greeks would have not succeeded. During the First Balkan War in 1912, armies of Greeks, Bulgarians and Serbians are fighting against Turkey in order to liberate their people. They're all trying to conquer as many areas as possible, because according to the Balkan Treaty, whoever conquers a piece of land gets to keep it. The annexation of Thessaloniki was strategically crucial, because whoever controlled the city would have a huge leverage over the whole region of Macedonia and the Aegean. Everything changes for Greece when the Greek spy Athanasios Suliotis is going to see the Rokastro to meet with the Bulgarian general Gorgi Todorov. In the military hospital, the doctor of the Bulgarian army, Filipos Nikoglu, recognizes Suliotis and speaking to him in Greek reveals the most important information of the war, that the Bulgarian army was moving towards Thessaloniki. Suliotis managed to send a telegram to Athens and inform Venizelos. Shortly after, during the night of October 18th, 1912, in the port of Thessaloniki, the Turkish battleship Fethi Bouled is completely destroyed after an explosion executed by the Greek Admiral Votis, a major blow for the Turkish army that it wasn't safe in its own city anymore. What follows is the conflict between the heir to the throne of Greece, Konstantinos, and the Prime Minister, Venizelos, who was pressuring Konstantinos to march to Thessaloniki. The tension between the two men is documented through the multiple telegrams that they exchanged. Venizelos, through his foreign minister, sends a telegram to Konstantinos, pleading with him to move with his army immediately towards Thessaloniki, due to political reasons. Konstantinos refused to comply. He thought that his army should march towards Monastiri, not understanding that those few days would be crucial for the fate of Thessaloniki, and the outcome would be devastating for the Greeks. The same night, Venizelos conducted and sent a telegram to Konstantinos ordering him to march to Thessaloniki. The conflict becomes deeper and more serious than ever before. The Bulgarian forces are moving towards the city. Konstantinos insists on his decision and he sends a telegram to Venizelos. A decision of the army is to move towards Monastiri unless you forbid me to do so. Venizelos responded with three words, I forbid you. The army finally changed its route towards Thessaloniki. On October 19, 1912, the Greek army reaches the city of Yanitsa. Yanitsa was the holy city of the Ottomans in Macedonia, and so they attacked the Greek forces, trying to defend it. General Hassan Tahsin Pasa brings all his forces to Yanitsa, and under the heavy rain, the Greek army stuck in the mud and suffers tremendous losses. Nonetheless, the Greek army is more experienced and well-trained, and they prevail. The Turkish army retreats to Thessaloniki, burning everything in their way. After the victory in Yanitsa, Konstantinos doesn't obey the order of Venizelos to march to Thessaloniki while the Bulgarian forces are riding towards the city. Venizelos sends an angry telegram to Konstantinos, and after his intervention, the Greek army finally marches to the city. Along the way, a huge obstacle arises. The bridges of Axios River have been destroyed by the Turkish forces after the retreat, making the river impossible to cross. The villagers of the surrounding areas were the ones who solved the problem by demolishing their houses and using the materials to construct a temporary bridge for the Greek army to pass. Now the road to Thessaloniki is opening ahead. On October 25, 1912, the Greek army finally reaches Thessaloniki, while the Bulgarian forces are only a breath away. The Greek army enters the city in the midst of celebrations from its people, and after 480 years, they liberate the city. The multicultural communities of Thessaloniki are terrified that the military forces will destroy it, and so they are pleading with Hassan Tahsin Pasa to surrender without a fight. Foreign ambassadors pressuring him as well, for a peaceful surrender. Finally, the city surrendered to the Greeks after Hassan Tahsin Pasa chooses not to fight. He surrenders the city with a historic phrase, we took the city from the Greeks and to the Greeks we shall return it. A significant decision as the city would have otherwise been destroyed by the military. 
Hassan Tahsin Pasa later in his memoirs wrote, The Saloniki was lost, but the Saloniki was saved. On the night of October 26, 1912, Victor Dushmanis and Johannes Metaxas signed the treaty and the city surrenders without a drop of blood. The Saloniki now belongs to Greece.